Hi, it's John C. Parkin here on the beach again, and I'm really excited. We've been getting lots of comments and questions about this whole do what you love thing. So just in case you haven't seen the previous two videos, and there will be a link on this page to those videos if you want to see them, or you want to see them again. Um, I'm the author of the best-selling Fuck It books, and in particular the one that we're on the subject of at the moment, which is Fuck It, Do What You Love, which came out in early 2016. And I'm on the beach here again on Italy's Adriatic coast, because number one, we live that way, close by, and number two, uh, in that direction, I'm doing a retreat at the moment, a Fuck It, Do What You Love retreat in a lovely hotel with a great group of people. So in the first video, we talked about why we might want to do what we love. And as well as the obvious point of it making you happier because you're doing what you love, uh, that it also makes you healthier, uh, that it can make you more successful, and if you want, thus wealthier. And in the second video, we did an exercise straight from the retreat on how to work out what you love and how to make more time to do it. And in this video, we're covering another big yes but. Yes but, how can I make money from doing what I love? And in this retreat that I'm running down the coast, we really look at this in some depth, how to find an idea from the stuff that you love and make money from it. And today I'm going to share with you that model, the one we've been exploring during this retreat, which can help you understand how to value yourself and also start to think about how you could make or start to make some cash from doing what you love. It's really simple, but it's totally mind-blowing in the way that you start to see possibilities for yourself and how you value yourself. And you could see it a little like this pyramid. At the base of the pyramid, where there are most people, we have the generalists. Generalists, what in economics used to be called the non-skilled workforce, are those who haven't developed any form of specialism. And there are lots of generalists. And consequently, the amount they're paid is relatively low. Maybe close to the minimum wage, actually. For simplicity, let's say that generalists earn about £10 an hour. If you train in something, you become a specialist. There are fewer specialists than there are generalists. They are the skilled workforce. And in economics, they have moved through what are called barriers to entry. A barrier to entry, which makes it harder to get into that group, increases the value of that group. For simplicity, let's say that the specialist can earn between five and 10 times more than the generalist. It clearly depends on the market. But you're looking at, for example, 50 to 100 pounds per hour. So what's next up? Can you guess? Experts. Experts are specialists that have really sussed their job. Maybe they've specialised even more. Maybe they're renowned in their area. Maybe they've written books. The point is, this is an even smaller group. And that means what? That they can charge even more for their time. Again, this is an oversimplified picture, but five to ten times more takes the amount that they can earn to between £250 to £1,000 an hour. And if you think about expert lawyers or consultants, you'll see that we're not that far off with those figures. So that's it, yeah? I mean, who could earn more than £1,000 an hour? Well, there is one more category, and they're right at the top. And there's usually only one or just a few of them in any given market. This is the guru. And there's a guru in most fields. The guru is the expert's expert. They are usually famous. They probably innovated in the field. Maybe they even invented the field. Think about business guru Richard Branson, or coach Tony Robbins, or inventor of the Dyson, Mr. Dyson, and so on. Gurus tend to earn a lot of money for what they do. And if you want to use that five to 10 times multiple again, that means they're earning anywhere between a thousand pounds an hour and 10,000 pounds an hour for what they do. Though to be honest, 
gurus aren't likely to be charging for their time per hour anyway. They stopped trading time for money a long time ago, but that's another story. For now, know that if you're thinking about trying to make some money from doing what you love, then how you're seen in your market will greatly affect your value in that market and how much you can charge for your time if that's what you're going to do. This is all very exciting and this whole do what you love thing is very important as I've mentioned. So I'm looking forward to sharing more with you. So do look out for an email coming your way in the next couple of days. And as usual, please do leave a comment below. Maybe you want to guess where I am on the Adriatic coast, or maybe you want to mention that you saw dolphins behind me as I was talking. So please do write something. I love reading your comments. Thanks again. Till next time. Ciao.